Welcome to Math for Game Developers. Quick PSA before we start. A lot of people have been asking how to get the um, the project working with Visual Studio uh, 2015. And so I've finally gotten off my lazy butt and gotten it working. Um, it's a long story why it didn't work before. I had to do some hacky stuff, but it works now. It should also still work with any version going back to 2010. Uh, if it doesn't, let me know. And um, so, I, and also, I didn't go and update the old projects. If I had a time machine, I would have assembled the, I would have structured the project in a different way. But there's just too much work for me to go and 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 redo all of those old projects and get them to work with 2015. But from here going forward, uh, starting with the current master and going forward, everything should work with 2015. Uh, all right, so. Where were we? Um, oh, I want to make a slight departure. We're, get, we're going to start with the math now. I want to make a slight departure with uh, what we were doing before and go back to some reviews. So this is a bonus video, sort of. We're going to do a little bit of review and we're going to go all the way back to D equals RT. That is distance equals rate times time. This is a formula that we learned a long time ago. But it assumes, if I'm going to draw a graph over here. Okay, this is time and this is rate. It assumes that the rate is constant, okay? And then, like, uh, you can see that it's kind of, uh, it's like multiplying, so this is the amount of time that has passed, and this is the rate, and you multiply the two together, and you get the area, this area right here. It's like having the area of a, uh, of a box, right? You do the, the width times the height. Um, but the rate has to be constant for that. If the rate varies if the rate looks like this then you're not you don't have that nice box that you can say width times height anymore and so this equation breaks down so in our situation our camera is varying over time we don't have this right we don't have a nice clever box we can't just do rate times time so let's see what we do instead so there is there's some function f uh, which describes the position of the object, the camera, or the player, or whatever, over time. And the derivative of that function describes the player's velocity over time. So this is what we have. We have the derivative of the position function with respect to time, and that is a function of t. So this is the speed. This is the speed of the player, or the velocity. Uh, and that is a function of time. That changes over time so you can't just you can't just multiply it by time anymore because you know we don't have the nice rectangle picture anymore so what we've been doing is if we want to see what d is we have to break this up into tiny little um portions of time which each of which is a little box okay so we have you know this is the this is the rate function we've been breaking this up into boxes like this. Kind of like this, right? And then we've been summing the size of those little boxes. And then as the as the um, as the width of those little boxes gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually it gets infinitely small, and then this approximation gets better and better and better. And then you have an integral. It pops into an integral. So this is all review, right? Uh, we have this function of time, our speed function of time, and then it uh, it is an integral with respect to the time variable. And so if you if you can do this, if you can solve this integral in closed form, it will give you a perfect um, a perfect answer for what the what is the total amount of distance that someone has gone, even though their speed is varying over time, it will tell you exactly the amount of distance they have gone between two points in time. Uh, and so, with that in mind, I want to go back to the formula that we were talking about last week, okay? So it looked like this, it will take me a while to write out again. This gets squared, I think I can do this from memory. 
dy dt squared. So square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. So let's think about what this is. Let's think about what this is. Oh, and, and we had it, I think between, we had it between zero and some time t naught. We'll call it t1. Uh, so dx dt is the speed in, only in the x direction. It's the speed of the camera or the, or the player or whatever it is that you're measuring the speed of only in the x direction. And so, so that might look like this, okay? dx dt. And dy dt is the speed only in the y direction. dy dt, d t. These guys form a triangle, and so if we want to find the total speed, we can do this by doing the Pythagorean theorem, which is what we did last video. I'm not going to do it again. Um, and so you get the square root of this stuff. So this whole thing, this whole thing is like the speed, which is a rate function. Okay, it's like a meters per second. And this dt is like time. It's in seconds. So really we have this is like that. And this is like that. So we're, we're really just doing rate times time. D, D equals RT is what we're doing. Um, the problem is that this method of, of adding up little rectangular boxes underneath the underneath whatever curve uh, is not always very efficient, or at least it's not as efficient as it can be. Um, well, hold on, let me take a step back here and say that, <laughs> I mean, you can see I wrote quadrature up here. Why did I do this? It's because when you do this, these methods of, um, of finding an integral by splitting it up into little boxes and adding up the area of each box, uh, it's actually not called integration anymore it's called quadrature. So when you are numerically solving an integral by breaking it up into little pieces, the name of that is a quadrature. Why is it not called numerical integration? Because uh, that name was taken. So for historical reasons, something else, which is conceptually similar but fundamentally different, is called numerical integration. And we're going to get to that eventually. And it's really cool. Um, but since that name was already taken, people called this quadratures. Or actually, I could I could have I could have this the other way around. History is very confusing. You should never believe a mathematician who talks about mathematical history because they always get it wrong. But there is a historical reason for this weird name. The reason it's not called integration when this is an integral. Okay, but the main thing that I wanted to get um, get at here is that we're really just doing distance times time here. So we have a we have this is really just a rate function, a really complicated looking one, and so we're solving this same problem where we're trying to find essentially the area under a curve, but more accurately, the accumulation of a rate function. How much distance did I go if my rate is, is this function, which is a function over time? So there is, um, there is a better method of quadrature that we're going to learn next, where this is our function, okay? Instead of breaking things into little boxes, we break things into curves. So we'll find a curve, a very simple curve that estimates the, the, value of, the values of our function between here and here. And we'll get a much closer fit. You can ar already see that this is a much closer fit. So that's where we're headed. Uh, so I took, I took a week here to try and give people like a better sense, give people more context, get a better sense of what we're doing. Um, and this is called Simpson's rule. And that is what we are going to cover next week when we get back on track with making our camera move at a constant speed through a cubic spline. See you next week.